Hello students and learners, welcome to the new lecture and in this lecture we are going to discuss about the rhesus factor and the thalassemia. So these two are the topics that we are going to discuss and by this lecture we are going to end this chapter and after this chapter we are going to have some test, one test if you are interested you can attend the test and so on. Okay, and the test may begin within uh, one or two days or maximum of three days and so that within these three days of time you can uh, prepare for the exam so that to score um, good marks and so on. Okay, so here the rhesus factor. So what is meant by rhesus factor? Rhesus factor means, wait a minute. So the rhesus factor means it is a, a protein. It is a protein or you can call it as an antigen. So what is meant by antigen? Antigen is a protein that is present on the RBC. Okay, if the protein is present on the RBC, that is known as rhesus factor. In these indi uh, the individuals who has the protein on the RBC, example here you can see this is the RBC and this RBC has some kind of antigen. So this antigen is known as a rhesus factor. So the people who have the RB, who have the rhesus factor or the antigen on the RBC, they are known as RH positive and the people who don't have the antigen on the surface of the RBC, they are known as RH negative. So where the RH negative is, RH or rhesus factor is identified. This rhesus factor is identified in rhesus monkeys. So if it is discovered in the rhesus monkeys, so the name rhesus is given for this factor or antigen or you can call it as a protein. You can almost all the time you cannot call it as a protein, but it is a protein. Okay. There are different types of the protein. Antigen is a one type of the protein. Okay. Next is the 85% of the people in the Britain have this antigen on their RBC, okay, RBC cells. These people who are in the Britain are Britain people, they have the 85% of the people have the rhesus factor, okay. It means they are RH positive persons, okay. The presence of this antigen is known as rhesus positive. Just now we have discussed if the antigen is present on the surface of the RBC, they are known as RH positive individuals. If they don't have any RH antigen, or a rhesus factor on the surface, they are known as RH negative. Okay, so next is they do not carry antibodies to this factor. For example, at presence and absence of these RH positive and negative, the plasma, okay, the plasma do not have any RH antibodies, okay, no RH antibodies in here. So, what is meant by antigen antibodies? Both are proteins, okay, antigen is generally present on the surfaces of the RBC in case of rhesus factor, okay. So when the RH positive blood is transferred to the RH negative persons, the RH factors will be produced and causing the death of the RBC cells in the destruction. For example, let us consider this is the person. Okay, the person having the uh, RH positive, RH positive person is donating or transfusing the blood to the RH negative person. RH negative person means no RH, uh, RH antigen. Okay, so RH negative. So if the blood is given from the RH positive to the RH negative persons, what will happen? So there is a production of the RH factors. RH factors will be produced in the RH negative person. Okay, RH negative person as a result of the RBC in this person will get destroyed. So RBC which is present in the RH negative person will get destroyed due to the RH positive or due to the RH factors. Okay. So as a result, the RH positive persons should not donate the blood to the RH negative persons. Okay. And next is marriage between the RH man and also RH woman likely to be the RH positive baby. For example, here you can see this is the father. Okay. The father is RH positive and also the mother is RH negative. So as a result, what will happen? There is a the their baby may be RH positive baby. Okay, the baby will be the RH positive. So, okay, fine. What will happen? So, when there is a delivery, so there is a mixing, a mixing of the blood, okay, the mixing of the child's baby, uh, child blood with mother's baby, okay, mother's blood plus child blood will get mixed, okay, there is a mixing. So, what is it? What will happen? The mother's, mother's body has RH native blood, okay, RH native blood as a result, RH antibodies rh antibodies will be produced inside the mother's body and in each and every delivery there is an increase of the rh antibodies inside the mother's body okay 
So as a result, what will happen? At some point of time, this Rh antibodies is increased in the uh, mother's body, and there is a increased level is going to kill the RBC. Okay, RBC of the child. Okay, RBC of the child. So as a result, what will happen? The child may die. Okay, why? Because this antibodies is going to kill the Rh positive baby. Okay, Rh positive baby will get killed. So due to the antibodies, Rh antibodies, which is there in the mother's blood, these antibodies is going to move from the mother's blood to the child blood, and in the child blood, uh, in the child blood, they, uh, there is RBC in the child blood, and the child's RBC will get destroyed by these antibodies. Okay, so this is the condition. And increased concentration of antibodies deliver in the each delivery like to be passed to the into the RBC bloodstream, leading to the death of the RBC cells, Rh positive RBC cells. We will discuss about it uh, after a moment in detail. So to prevent this condition, the complete blood transfusion is necessary to replace the blood containing antibodies for rhesus factor. So how you can prevent such kind of uh, disaster in this in these people? Okay, what you are going to do? You are going to replace the blood. Okay, the blood is replaced. The child's right after the birth of the child. So the child will have the Rh positive antibodies. Okay, Rh positive antibodies. As a result, these Rh positive antibodies has to be removed only by a process is known as a transfusion. Okay, the blood transfusion, or you can call it as a bl complete blood transfusion is necessary to save the baby. Okay, and not only that. The same Rh positive antibodies will be can be removed from the baby when the baby is inside the womb. Okay, even though the baby is inside the womb of a mother, so this uh, transfusion can be done. Okay, so next, not only that, you can prevent such kind of disaster by stimulate by stopping the stimulation of the antibody production. So right after the delivery, so the mother, the mother is given one injection. Okay. These injections they are going to suppress. They are going to suppress the stimulation of the antibody production. It means they will not allow the uh, body to produce the antibodies for Rh positive. Okay, Rh positive blood. Okay, as a result, the mother will not have the Rh positive antibodies. As a result, there is no danger in the next pregnancy, and the child will not die in the next pregnancy or next delivery. Okay. So next is thalassemia. So what is thalassemia? Thalassemia is completely based upon the inherited blood disorder. So what is inherited blood disorder? Inherited means the diseases which is coming from the parents to the children. They, uh, that is the disease is known as inherited diseases. So but here the disease is related to the blood. Okay, hence you can call it as inherited blood disorder. So this blood disorder is caused by the hemoglobin deficiency in the RBC cells. So the people uh, in the last lectures also we have discussed that there is RBC. The RBC cells contains hemoglobin proteins. It is a pigment. Hemoglobin is a red color pigment. So this pigment, if you zoom into it, you can see there is a proteins. Okay, there is a the proteins. So these proteins are four. There are four hemoglobin proteins. These hemoglobin uh, proteins are going to carry the oxygen. Okay. So these hemoglobin proteins are going to carry the oxygen, and when these proteins are defective, okay, when these pro proteins are defective, they cannot carry oxygen to the body, okay. As a result, the persons are going to suffer a lot, okay. And deficiency of hemoglobin cannot cause uh, cannot carry enough oxygen to the body tissue. Hence, the condition may be mild to severe. Mild means uh, normal. Severe means uh, very very uh, danger diseases, okay. So there are two types of thalassemia based upon the damage. So that is alpha thalassemia. It means alpha proteins are damaged or defective. Beta thalassemia means the beta proteins of hemoglobin is defective. So based upon it, you can uh, based upon the damage, you can uh, classify into alpha thalassemia and also beta thalassemia. Okay, that is completely based on the defective part of the hemoglobin. The symptoms of uh, thalassemia is anemia. What is meant by anemia means less blood. Okay, if the hemoglobin is less, the RBC also contain less, and as a result, the RBC cannot carry sufficient amount of oxygen to the tissue. That condition is known as anemia. And also, the symptoms like enlarged liver. Liver is going to increase in size. Not only liver, the spleen is also going to increase in size. 
and increased susceptibility to uh, infection. Susceptibility means the chance. These people have the more chance to get diseases that is known as infection. Next, they have the slow growth. These people will grow slowly. For example, especially the children, the children who have the thalassemia disease, they will slow, they will grow very very slowly when compared to the normal children. And also, not only that, they have the thin and brittle bones. Thin means the bones which are very very uh, thin and also means not proper in size. And their bones is uh, their bones can be broken down easily. It means while they are playing or running or jumping. So due to the slight pressure, their bones will get broken down. Okay. Next, they will have the heart and liver failure. Why? Because if there is no proper supply of oxygen, there is no proper metabolic uh, uh, process. If there is no proper metabolic process, it is going to show effect on the heart and liver also. Okay. So next there is the facts about the thalassemia. So facts means the truth information or true information. So it is a serious inherited blood disorder. Inherited means which is coming from the mothers to the, uh, which coming from the parents to children or grandparents to the children. So th uh, that is known as inherited. It is related to the blood. It is known as inherited blood disorder. And 4.5% of the world population is suffering from the thalassemia minor. Okay. There are two types, the thalassemia major and also thalassemia minor. Thalassemia major means the disease condition is severe and thalassemia minor means the disease condition is not that much severe. Okay. And here 35 million of the Indians are carriers of the abnormal gene. So what is meant by carrier? Carrier means a person who carries the disease but he will not get infected. For example, if the mother is carrier or the father is carrier, what they are going to do? They are they have the defective gene, their gene is defective. Okay, out of two genes, okay, we know that each and every individual has a, a set, okay, which is coming from the mother and which is coming from the father. Out of these two genes, out of these two, out of these two hemoglobin genes, one gene is defective, another gene is perfect. One is defective, another is perfect. In that condition, they will be carriers, they will be carriers, they will uh, transfer the disease to the children, okay. The same way, the father may be carrier, okay, in this case, when they are carriers, so one gene is perfect, another gene is defective, they will become carriers, they will transmit the disease to the children, okay, so if the child will get both defective genes, okay, defective gene from the mother, defective gene from the father, in that condition, the child is going to suffer from the thalassemia, okay, another condition, another condition is the child, the child is receiving one perfect gene, okay, one perfect gene from the mother and one damaged gene from the father, okay, in that condition, this child will become carrier, this child will become carrier, they, again, the chil ch children of the child may be carriers or diseased persons or the, the persons or the children who is going to suffer from the thalassemia or thalassemic children, okay. I hope you have understood the uh, carriers and also thalassemic persons. So here the 10,000 to 12,000 thalassemic children are born every year in the India. Okay. So based on the estimation about 1 lakh infants, uh, infants in, what is meant by infant? Infants mean the children. Okay. The newly born children, they are known as infants and they are being born with the major hemoglobinopathies. Hemoglobinopathies means that the uh, individuals who are suffering from the hemoglobin disease, uh, uh, this thalassemia is known as hemoglobinopathies. Hemo major hemoglobinopathies means they have the severe condition of this disease each in every year in the world. Okay, survival of the patient is completely based upon the blood transfusion. Blood transfusion means supply of blood to the disease people or people who are uh, suffering from the disease. So this is known as the blood transfusion. So the supply of blood to these individuals is one of the survival and also costly medicines. They need blood transfusion along with costly medicines. These two are necessary for the survival. Okay. Then only they are going to survive. Thalassemia can be prevented by the awareness. Example, premarital or preconceptual screening. Premarital means before marriage. Pre means before marital means marriage. That is known as premarital. Preconceptual means before having pregnancy. Okay, so premarital and preconceptual screening is necessary 
for the identification of the thalassemia children okay before the birth and before marriage so they are going to do some kind of test to these couple and they will say that whether they are going to have the uh, the whether they are going to have the thalassemia child or not okay followed by the antenatal diagnosis antenatal means the child before the birth okay so next the treatment the treatment is the major uh, is a thalassemia major patient should have that uh, if they have di uh, not if they should be diagnosed what is meant by diagnose diagnose means identification or doing test about the disease is known as diagnosis so the major thalassemia major patient should be diagnosed as early as possible in order to prevent the growth restrictions it means if the child is having such kind of symptoms they have to get diagnosed by doing some test and also they have to do some proper medication and also proper blood transfusion to prevent growth restriction growth restriction means stopping of the growth next the fragile bones means the breakdown of the bones and infections in the first year of the life it means in the first year of the uh, first year uh, year after the birth so to prevent such kind of damages the proper medication should be done right after the diagnosis okay hemoglobin level should be monitored closely so how much amount of the hemoglobin is present in the blood that is known as the hemoglobin monitoring okay 70% of the children show the signs of the poor growth and developments these children who are who are suffering from the hemoglobin 70% of them have the poor growth okay poor growth means they are not going to grow properly and also they are not going to develop it means their body will not develop properly so next is the blood transfusion is a treatment of the choice and also uh, median hemoglobin value is 150 to uh, 150 150 to 120 grams per liter and can be achieved by the blood transfusion for every 3 to 4 weeks according to the who what is who world health organization okay thalassemia major can be cured it means thalassemia major is a serious disease, serious uh, condition and this disease can be cured by the stem cell transplantation so what is meant by stem cell stem cell means these are a type of the cells these type of the cells can differentiate into any cell for example let us consider this is a stem cell so this stem cell may differentiate into heart cells this stem cell may differentiate into muscle cells this stem cell may develop into nerve cells and so on it means this stem cell has the capability to turn into any cell okay that is known as stem cell it has capabilities to turn into any cell for example if you take the heart cell the heart cells may give stress to heart cells only but not stem cell but not stem cell okay so this is the main advantages of the stem cell so the stem cell can be transplanted into the patients through bone marrow transplantation okay bone marrow transplantation means so the bone marrow is taken so from the siblings for example this is the patient okay the patient of the thalassemia okay and this is a normal child normal child or normal sibling okay both are let us consider both are brothers okay one brother is suffering from the thalassemia uh, disease one is fine okay one is perfectly fine no disease at all so in that conditions the bone marrow is taken from the sibling and also given to the patient who, who is suffering from the thalassemia so that is also bone marrow transplantation bone marrow transplantation it means the bone marrow is taken from the normal child or normal uh, uh, normal brother and also transfer to the thalassemia patient okay so when it is possible it is possible only when the patient's sibling should have the identical tissue type so the tissue type of these two persons the tissue type of normal child and the tissue type of the uh, thalassemia patient should match then only such kind of a bone marrow transplantation is possible so what is the tissue type that is nothing but hla human leukocyte antigen should match the human like human leukocyte uh, the human leukocyte antigen should match between uh, thalassemia patient and also normal sibling okay then only such kind of a bone marrow transplantation is possible okay I hope this lecture is helpful to you and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel so that you will get notifications and also like, share and also comment. And you can ask your doubts or questions in the comment section so that we could reply to it. And in the next lecture, we are going to uh, have a test. Okay. If you are interested to take the chapter 3 test, okay, then you can go for it.
so after one or two days the link will be provided in the description and by clicking on the link you will be taken to the test okay exam test and you can uh, uh, give your multiple choice uh, options okay mcqs the mcq questions will be there it will be 20 each question is getting the one mark and also the result will be displayed after the exam and uh, how many marks you got will be displayed after the exam or after submitting the exam okay in the next lecture right after the next day okay or in the next day after the exam uh, we will discuss we will discuss about the question paper okay it means why the particular option is correct and why the <clears throat> particular option is wrong we are going to discuss in the uh, question paper that is nothing but the key paper dis uh, discussion okay and uh, we will see you in the next lecture. We in the next lecture we will start with chapter four after the chapter three test. Okay.